Now at five and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com, how community leaders are uniting to address the lasting impact of teen decisions, including false threats in Victoria ISD. Plus a key inflation report out today, a look at what it shows and how the Fed might react. Plus, distracted driving is a growing concern as millions of Americans get ready to travel for the holiday season. Yes, it's the holiday season time and we're waiting for that cooler weather. Where is it? It's uh, out on the West Coast. But for tonight, uh, we'll be looking at a north wind blowing in and that will begin the cooling trend. Tomorrow, not as warm. By next week, oh yes, we're looking for sweater weather. We'll talk about that coming up in just a moment. And how a man who had his high school football championship ring stolen decades ago gets it back. You're watching 25 News Now at 5. Good afternoon and thanks for being with us. I'm Shauna Curry. In response to a series of incidents tied to false threats in the Victoria ISD, two community leaders with two different backgrounds have come together to bring a social media celebrity to the crossroads. The goal is to remind students that their actions can have a lasting impact on their lives. 25 News Now Sunrise anchor Carolina Estrain spoke with them at the event's venue to learn more. Holy Gabbana is a social media celebrity who used to go by a different rap name before he turned to God and ultimately turned his lifestyle around. He used to do stunts on social media like jumping into a pile of Christmas presents displayed at a store or putting on brand new shoes and running out of the store with them. Well, he gained lots and lots of followers for that from doing that, but in that he lost him, himself. And I think he can really speak to students about not just the, the here and now, but what those choices can do to you later. Jody Yancey Sandoval is the founder of Teens Grounded. She and Victoria County District Attorney Constance Philly Johnson teamed up to bring Holy Gabbana to Victoria. Their hope is that students engage with a celebrity speaker. And so this was an opportunity to have a positive event where we can include them in the conversation about how important their choices are. Johnson says while she and Sandoval have different political views, they're putting their differences aside for the common good. Carolina Estrain, KVU-TV, 25 News Now. Here's what you need to know about the event. It starts at 2 p.m. on Sunday and goes until 6 p.m at the Emerging Technology Complex. You can expect door prizes, breakout sessions, and dinner, and you can learn more about signing up at crossroadstoday.com. This is a free event for students 7th through 12th grade. A Victoria man is facing two charges of online solicitation of a minor, one with sexual conduct. The Department of Public Safety arrested 39-year-old Patrick Giles on those two charges. He is now being held in the Victoria County Jail with bond set at $100,000 total. Distracted driving is a major concern in the U.S. as millions are getting ready to hit the road for the upcoming holiday season. According to a new survey from the Pew Research Center, many Americans say the roads in their communities are less safe since the end of the COVID-19 pandemic. Nearly 80% were most concerned about people using their cell phones while driving. Tailgating, running red lights, speeding, and weaving through traffic are also worries. And with the busiest travel season of the year just weeks away, that brings us to our viewer poll. Are you concerned about the potential delays and cancellations with airlines this year? Yes, I expect significant travel disruptions. No, I think airlines are better prepared this year, or I'm not planning to travel. We want to hear from you. Come to crossroadstoday.com slash vote to participate, um, or you can simply scan the QR code there at the top of your screen. And right now, 74% uh, of voters say that they do not plan to travel uh, out of town this holiday season. So continue to vote, and we'll have the latest on 25 News Now at 6. Well, let's take a look at what's going on in weather. First, Warren Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Matt Perez is here with a first look outside. And Mac, another very warm, sunny day. But 
Yes. You said that changes are coming, right? I am hopeful that those changes will be on their way, but it's going to take a couple days before it gets here. But in the meantime, we've got to now track another tropical system. This is tropical wave number 13, and you can 19 rather. And as you can see, it is getting going. It is going to roll up through the Yucatan and get into the Gulf of Mexico. Where it goes after that, we'll be talking about that coming up in just a few minutes, and we'll take a look at your seven-day forecast. All that in just a moment. Back to you, Shana. All right, feels like we're still in the middle of summer. Thanks, Mac. Well, a key inflation report out today showing inflation is up 0.2% from last month and up 2.6% since last year. The Fed is expected to stay course with another interest rate cut next month. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest. Inflation is up, according to a new report out from the Labor Department today. The Consumer Price Index showing inflation ticked up 0.2% from last month and up 2.6% since last October, in line with economists' expectations. I think we would have liked to have seen more progress when it comes to inflation. The overall uh, look is that trend, the trend of lower inflation continues, but it has been a very slow go. The Biden administration weighing in on this inflation report, arguing that it shows inflation is close to its pre-pandemic rate. This chart sort of shows you how far we've come with regards to inflation. As you can see, it's sort of stabilizing the past couple of months. While overall inflation has come down dramatically from a peak of 9% in 2022, some price increases are still outpacing inflation. Rent prices up nearly 5% in the past year. Car insurance is up 14%. Overall, Americans paying about $171 more per month for the same goods, but wages have also increased. Incomes for the typical household have risen $248 a month over the past year. Americans' credit card balances hitting a new record high of over $1 trillion in the third quarter of the year, according to a report from the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. The Fed wants to see inflation around 2%, and we are close to that target. The Fed is expected to stay course with another interest rate cut next month. In welcome news for day-to-day -day expenses, gas prices are down about 30 cents since last year, and we could see the national average dip below $3 a gallon in the next couple of months. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Lawmakers in the Texas House and Senate filed more than 1,000 pieces of legislation Tuesday, offering an early look at the issues they hope to prioritize when they gavel in for the 89th legislative session in January. One of those includes property tax relief. To read the full Texas Tribune article, come to our website, crossroadstoday.com. Well, it's been more than 20 years since a North Texas man celebrated his high school football team winning the state championship. Blake Poole says he always cherished the championship ring that he received. But decades ago, someone stole his prized possession during a home invasion. And now, thanks to a stranger's discovery on social media, Poole's story has taken a surprise turn. Nicole Nielsen has the story. You know, I wasn't the star of the team, but basically, I mean, here's my beautiful bleach blonde hair. Blake Poole remembers 2002 well. It was the year his football team, the South Lake Carroll Dragons, won the state championship. I think this was after a win. The team all received beautiful rings as a symbol of their accomplishment. But the next year, a home invasion in 2003 meant it was stolen alongside other family heirlooms. It was just one of those times where it's like, man, you know, I, it, it was special, you know, took a lot of work to get it for, you know, the team. And it was, it's been 20 years at this point, but at the time, I mean, it was, it was a pretty big deal. As the years passed, he almost forgot about the ring, but on Monday, a Facebook post caught his wife's eye. I knew that people would see it and, and knew that it was a prized possession and, and that they would try and help find who owned it. Dusty Steele came across a Facebook marketplace listing over the weekend selling the ring for just $50. My first thought uh, when I saw it was this has got to be lost or stolen. He decided to purchase it with the intent to find pool. The only clue being a last name on the ring and within 30 minutes on social media he'd been found. The pair met up within a matter of hours to finally place the ring back on the right hand. You could tell that it meant a lot to him. Today, Mr. Poole spent the morning reminiscing on the good times, excited to share photos and his ring with his own son. It's, it's refreshing that people still care enough these days to, to help somebody out. A case of strangers helping strangers, proving that patience sometimes does pay off and that simple acts of kindness aren't so rare after all. 
Well, that year, the Dragon team was predicted to finish fourth in the district, but they ended up 10 and 0 and eventually went on to beat a team from San Antonio to win the state championship. Well, here are some of the top headlines that you can read this week in the Quero record. Republicans dominate in the DeWitt County general election and flags were placed on veterans graves at Westoff Cemetery. You can read these stories and more at DeWittCountyToday.com. And remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. You do that by clicking the like button and hitting the notification bell so you'll receive alerts. Stay with us straight ahead on 25 News Now at 5. Republicans are on track to hold the House, giving President-elect Trump a powerful path to push his agenda. Now the big question is just how much power they'll really have next year. Plus, Trump and Biden meet at the White House as Trump continues announcing key cabinet staff positions. Welcome back. CNN projects that Republicans will hold on to the House of Representatives, keeping control of the lower chamber by a slim margin. This hands President-elect Donald Trump and his party full control in Washington, D.C., allowing him to quickly fill his cabinet and push his agenda for at least the next two years. Last week, Republicans flipped three Democratic Senate seats, securing control of the Senate. The House Republicans' win was driven by Trump's decisive victory over Vice President Kamala Harris in both the Electoral College and the popular vote, dealing a significant setback to Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries and the Democrats, who now face limited checks on Trump's presidency. Well, Donald Trump is back in Washington. The president-elect met with President Joe Biden, and the two were expected to discuss the transition process. Julia Benbrook is at the White House with more on this visit. President Joe Biden and President-elect Donald Trump meeting in the Oval Office Wednesday. Looking forward to having a, like we said, a smooth transition. It's their first sit-down since Trump secured a second term. Politics is tough, and it's, uh, in many cases, not a very nice world, but it is a nice world today, and I appreciate very much it, a transition that's so smooth it'll be as smooth as it can get. It's a tradition for the outgoing president to host the incoming commander in chief after the election. But Trump did not host Biden in 2020 as he fought the election results based on falsehoods about voter fraud. He also chose to skip Biden's inauguration. Following a disappointing loss for the Democratic Party, Biden has been intentional in his efforts to endorse the sanctity of the election and acknowledge Trump's victory. Campaigns are contests of competing visions. The country chooses one or the other. We accept the choice the country made. This meeting comes as Biden works to secure his legacy and Trump prepares to take office, tapping loyalists for key positions that offer a glimpse into how certain policies may be implemented. 
According to people familiar with Trump's plans, South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem will be asked to lead the Department of Homeland Security, and sources say Florida Senator Marco Rubio is his top choice for Secretary of State. The FBI arrests Asif Rahman, who's accused of leaking classified U.S. intelligence about Israel's planned response to Iran. Rahman, who had top security clearance, reportedly posted sensitive documents on Telegram in mid-October. These documents were marked for U.S. and allied eyes only. Indicted last week, he now faces charges of willfully retaining and sharing national defense information. He was arrested in Cambodia and is being brought to Virginia for trial. Protesters gather in Paris in response to a gala being held there called Israel is Forever. The far right association behind the gala previously posted anti-Palestinian content on Facebook. Several groups, including hard left party France Unbowed, are expected to take part in the protest. This is ahead of the French national team's football match against Israel on Thursday, which police have described as a high risk event. Back at home, here are some of the top headlines that you can read in the Port Lavaca Wave this week. The Extension Service gives healthy Thanksgiving food tips, and a local church is gearing up for Operation Christmas Child. You can read these stories and more at portlavacawave.com. Another sunny day for us and temperatures into the 80s, but that's going to be changing in a couple of days, not through this weekend, but uh, we're, next week is going to be very, very interesting. 85 right about now. Our uh, maximum temperature came in, well, it's not in just yet, but it's probably about 87, I believe. And our temperature should be around 75. 80, 93 is our record high for the date, but there's two fronts that we're looking at. One comes in tonight and the other one comes in late on the weekend. We'll be talking about that coming up after this. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Lots of sunny, warm weather still with us, but there's going to be a change on the horizon. Uh, we have the closest rain to our area is actually the remnants of what used to be Raphael a while ago. Uh, that's rolling through Mississippi and, uh, and Florida as well. But for us, you see that little thin line of clouds right there? Let's do it one more time. You see, see right there, right there, right there, right there. That is actually the wind shift line associated with the front. In other words, all of a sudden, sometime later tonight, maybe already in some of your areas, you'll start feeling a north wind coming in, and that sort of begins the bit of a cool down uh, because we're going to be picking up north winds, and as a result, that little front will knock the temperature down just a little bit for the next couple of days. That's about 80, but the night times will be much more pleasant and cool and dry. That's when it gets very comfortable out there. Now, this is the big storm that's occurring right now through the Midwest, bringing rain all the way down into the southeast. But there's the big one. That is a very large Pacific storm uh, that's got a lot of cold air behind it right there. 
That one's going to roll into the Rockies and be the first big weather maker for them. Lots of snow expected out of this system, and then it crosses into the plains and digs down far enough to actually have an effect on us. I'll have more on that in a moment. Because of the north wind coming in overnight, we're only going to be 80 degrees tomorrow. Not bad at all. Look at that, 77 in Houston and in the low 70s throughout most of the state. There you see the winds uh, coming out of the northwest. That's why we're looking for that cool, dry air to come in. The cool air is good. It's that dry air that's going to be very arid. So that's why we, we're very cautious with anything that looks like a flame outdoors as we continue with that um, burn ban. But as we get through Saturday, you can see how the winds sort of turn around, bring us back a little bit moisture. But what is that? Well, that's that new system, tropical system, that's likely to become SARA, S-A-R-A, -A, uh, the tropical storm. We'll track that in a moment. Here's what SARA is going to do. Right now, it's a tropical cyclone 19 potential wave, and you can see it's up to about 25 miles an hour, but it is now forecast to strengthen, and I believe that maybe in the next day or so, it'll become a named storm, and it'll be rolling through Nicaragua and portions of Central America. Then it crosses into the Gulf of Mexico, and guess who's going to get it? Florida again, uh, very similar to what happened with Rafael. It'll come into the Gulf, and then it'll just get sliced in half by the uh, winds associated with that tropical storm. When you see this map, you obviously the uh, red and orange colors, that's warm weather. That's where we are now. When you see the blue, that's cool weather or cold weather or winter, if you want to call it. And notice that by the time we get to Saturday, we get a deep low cut off here in the southwest. Always look for that one because that one will pull warm, moist air out of the Pacific out ahead of it. And when that gets into our area, we have a good shot at getting some rain and colder weather. Here we are Tuesday of next week. And you can see a big old pocket of cold air, central part of the country, and we're finally going to be needing a sweater, believe it or not. Yes, we will. All right, sunny skies again tomorrow, but only 78. A little bit of a help there. Only 79 in Quero with abundant sunshine, dry weather. We're looking actually at a warm weekend getting back to the mid-80s, but our front finally begins on Tuesday with that frontal passage and then the cooler weather with a little bit of rain associated with it. That's your seven-day forecast reminding everybody we do have this QR code. We'd love for you to scan that, put Crossroads today on your phone, and we'll toss it back to Shauna. All right, thanks, Mac. Well, coming up next is your business news. Banks are reporting a 10 times increase in digital scams this year. What you should watch out for.
I am so excited to host the CMA Awards again. Nashville, here we come. Hey, tired honey, got a pocket full of money, and I'm headed straight home. Randy, what are you doing here? I'm hosting the CMA Awards with y'all. Country music's biggest night is almost here. Join us for all the excitement live from Nashville. It's the CMA Awards right here on KAVU ABC 25. Y'all ready to do this? I can pull off bell bottoms. Sure you can, buddy. <laughs> Here's a look at today's closing numbers for the stocks. The S&P 500 is up one point. The Dow is up 47 points and the Nasdaq is down 51 points. Oil is down 14 cents to $67.97 a barrel. Criminals are finding new ways to part you from your money. U.S. and Canadian banks reported a 10 times increase in digital scams this year. Cybersecurity firm BioCatch found that criminals are increasingly using persuasive tactics to trick people into giving them money through online systems. So-called social engineering scams, where criminals use persuasive tactics to get victims to send them money, began popping up about five years ago. But BioCatch says there's been a big uptick in the last 18 months. Costco is recalling 80,000 pounds of butter. According to the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, the butter is being pulled because the packaging lacks a contains milk statement. The recall includes Kirkland Signature unsalted sweet cream butter and Kirkland Signature salted sweet cream butter. The products were distributed throughout Texas. It's unclear if any allergic reactions have been reported. You can either return the butter to the store or throw it out. An iconic Texas landmark may soon come back to life. After years of sitting empty, the Houston Astrodome might reopen thanks to a new plan revealed by a nonprofit conservancy group today. This plan, unlike past attempts, includes revenue generating spaces like a hotel, offices, an arena, and an entertainment venue, along with food and beverage areas, all for a hefty $1 billion price tag. Astrodome Conservancy officials call it a future global destination with 86% of surveyed Texans wanting to preserve the dome. So far, the group has raised over $3 million in private funds. Up next is presenting the plan to the county and commissioners. Well, stay with us when we come back. We'll take a look at who is gracing the cover of People magazine as the sexiest man alive. Don't go away. Coming up tonight, the fire burning in New York City right now, also breaking President-elect Donald Trump, choosing Matt Gates for Attorney General, sending shockwaves, and thieves hitting the homes of Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. Mahomes breaking his silence just moments ago. We're next.
People Magazine has revealed the 2024 Sexiest Man Alive. The coveted title goes to actor John Krasinski. The publication shared a photo of Krasinski on its new cover on social media. Krasinski is best known for starring as Jim Halpert in The Office for nine seasons, but he also directed and starred in the 2018 A Quiet Place film alongside his wife, actress Emily Blunt. Krasinski joked that when he told Blunt about his sexy achievement, <laughs> he said, quote, there was so much laughter on the other end of the phone. <laughs> Gotta love that kind of relationship, right? <laughs> and you can see more at people.com. The issue is also available on newsstands now. So, Gee, what's yeah. George Clooney going to do now that he's not the sexiest man alive? I guess. I don't know. You don't have to worry about it, I guess. Got knocked off his pedestal. And, and Krasinski, <laughs> he's, he's funny. Mm -hmm. And he, he's a director and he's a yeah. big movie mogul now. So he's a master of many, many, many skills. TV, film. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Well, folks, for us, we are looking for a, a little bit of a break in the temperature beginning tomorrow. It will only be about 80 degrees because the north wind comes in overnight. Weekend still on the warm side, but then it all begins on Monday when the rain shows up ahead of the cold front, which begins on Tuesday. Now, now we'll be in the 80s Tuesday, but by the time we get to Wednesday, Thursday of next week, you're going to go, oh, now it feels like November. How about that? All right, I'm going to mark it on my calendar. Please do. So I know <laughs> when to pull the sweaters out. You bet. So. Well, thanks for being with us. We'll see you back here for 25 News Now at 6.